quite frequently we get samples of plants or pictures of plants in our offices to ID the plants. And uh, we'd love to do that, and most of the time we can figure that out. However, we want to give you some tips to help you, uh, to help us make sure that we identify it properly. And that is making sure that we get the right material. So, like I mentioned, there are two ways that you can you send the plants to us or information about the plants, and that is one by email, um, by taking images and sending us those pictures and then we can often identify the plants that way. That's the quickest way to get the, get the samples to us. Or you can actually take real samples and you, can, uh, and you can send them to us. So for pictures or images that you might be taking with a camera or with your phone or whatever, the important thing is make sure that the plant or the part of the plant that you're taking pictures of is in focus. If you're trying to zoom in or take a picture of the leaf, but your camera is focusing in on the ground 10 feet away, then we can't see your plant. We can't see those leaves, they'll come out blurry. So please make sure that you edit or, or look through your images, make sure they're clear and in focus before you send them to us. If they're blurry to you, they're gonna be blurry to us and a lot of times we can't tell what the plant is. Um, what I really like to have when, when people are sending plants images in, um, I like to see the whole plant. So if it's tree, stand back, take a picture of the whole tree. If it's a shrub, same thing. Uh, herbaceous plant, take a picture of the whole plant, um, then get some close-up pictures. Close-up pictures of the stems, um, the leaves, if you can get it even closer, uh, the bark and the buds and how the leaves are arranged on the stems can go a long way for us. If there are fruits and flowers present, definitely send those as well because those can really be helpful in identifying the plant. So make sure that you send us as much of the plant as you possibly can. Don't just send us a picture of a leaf, though there are some that have very unique leaves uh, that help us identify them quickly. There are many that have very similar shaped leaves, and so it can be really confusing if we don't have more of the plant. So make sure you send as much as you possibly can. Um, we also like to know where the plant is coming from, uh, you know, what part of the state. Uh, we also would like to know if it's a plant that you planted and you just forgot what it was or if it's something that's just popped up on its own, whether it might be native or a weed or something else. So knowing a little bit of history about the plant can help us a whole bunch. Now, when it comes to plant samples, if you want to send us samples in, that's fine. Again, as much of the plant as you possibly can, you know, package up and send, the better off you are. And for a plant like this, um, this is actually an ash tree. And uh, it has very, as you can see, very unique characteristics. It's actually in bloom or just finishing bloom and then already the seeds, seed pods have started to form on it. And uh, certainly that's going to be very helpful for us to identify. Another thing to notice on this is if you look, the leaves are arranged opposite each other on the stem. So maybe look at it this way. You can see that the, the leaves are attached to the stem opposite each other. Um, and there's a certain number of trees that have opposite leaves and that helps us narrow it down really quick. Many other trees have alternate leaves. In other words, there's a, a leaf here, a leaf here, a leaf here, here, you know, it's alternating up and down the branch. So when we can get a sample like this in, we can narrow that down really quickly to a handful of species and help us identify the plant. The other thing, as I mentioned, um, this is actually a whole leaf. This is the whole leaf, all of it. So this is what we call a pinnately compound leaf. If you just send this in to us and say, what is this? Not likely we're gonna know what it is. So that's why it's important to send as much as you think is possible, you know, is that you think is the branch or a part of the leaf and send it all in to us. Now, uh, when you're packaging it up, um, the best thing to do for a sample like this is just to put it in something that's sturdy, like a couple of pieces of cardboard. So I would lay it down in here we can, you can tape it, actually you probably would tape it to it so it doesn't slide around in there and to cover that up and then put it in an envelope and send it to us. Uh, if it's really fresh and green, you might even put a piece of newspaper or something in here to help absorb some of the moisture uh, so it dry, if it dries out, that, that, we don't want it to get mushy. So don't add water to your samples. Uh, keep them flat, keep them dry, send them in this way. Um, if you again have flowers and fruits, include those. If the fruits can't be uh, mesh down in between something like this. Uh, you know, if it's a big round fruit, uh, include it, but again, uh, try to keep it dry. Uh, wrap it up in newspaper or some, you know, tissue or something, 
and then package it up so it doesn't get bounced around and thrown around inside the box or whatever you send it in. Um, besides the cardboard, you know, something like a manila folder works great. And you can, again, put the plants in between there, close it up, package it up, and send it to us. I uh, just wanted to show you a couple other plant samples that I, that I grabbed. Uh, this one, again, also has the fruiting structure, flower and fruiting structures on it. Um, I know right away what this plant is because it's a very unique structure and not any, there aren't any other species or uh, plants, trees that have this. This is a tilia or one of the lindens. Um, another one that we often get in are the oaks. And again, if you just send us in a leaf, you know, I can probably tell you, yep, it's an oak. If you want to know what kind of oak, uh, that's going to be a little bit more difficult. Now there's groups of oaks and they have similar, they, we group oaks together based on some of their characteristics. So I could probably tell you if it's a red oak or a white oak, but when it comes down to more specific, um, I need more of the plant. So we look at again at the, at the bark, the stems, how the buds are arranged and how they look, how they form on the plant, what shape they are. Um, acorns, if you have the acorns, acorns can also be quite specific on uh, helping us identify the plants. So just a, a couple, you know, some f tips that I hope will be helpful for you. We love identifying plants, but be sure to provide us as much as you can so that we can correctly identify it. We hope you enjoyed this video. It's part of our Oklahoma Gardening YouTube channel. You can also find even more videos on our OK Gardening Classics YouTube channel. And join us on social media for great gardening tips, photos, and discussion.